Can we hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Can, I, can I just say a thank you to the leadership just for, for the invitation to come and share this morning? Um, I can't kind of privilege, kind of privilege to come. Uh, and can I also wish everyone a happy Father's Day as well? Um, series like me is in here filled up of, of underwear and socks now for the next 12 months. <laughs> it's always a blessed day, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, can we turn to the passage of Scripture in, uh, in Luke chapter 15? Just like look, look this morning at the, at the parable of the prodigal son.
that was the people that he was he was speaking this parable to. And so when we take a look at these two sons that this man had, that this father had, we can begin to see that Jesus was creating an almost image of, of the crowd that he was speaking to. The younger son was an image of the tax collector and the sinners. The younger son took, decided to go into that far country to live as he wanted to live. And yet the older son stayed at home and, and obeyed what his father told him to do and, and followed the commands of his father. A little bit like the Pharisees. But yet neither son, as we can read here, had an intimate relationship with the father. And obviously the third person in this picture, the father, is a beautiful picture of God. God our father. And so I want to, uh, I suppose it being Father's Day as well, I want us to just to take a, take a look this morning at the character of the Father here. I want us this morning just to take a quick look at just a few characteristics that we can see in this passage from this Father who is God. Hallelujah. And so, as we pick this up in verse 20, we see where the, the younger son has been into the far country. He has squandered everything that his father gave him. Verse 17, we see where he hits rock bottom. And then he does that new turn and repents and turns back to God. Decides to come back to the father. And as we pick this up in verse 20, I want just to pick out a few characteristics of the Father here. And just to dwell on them this morning. And in verse 20 it says, And he rose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. And anyway, I just want to stop there briefly. I want us just to consider the Father was watching for that wayward son to come by. He was watching, he was waiting. I know this morning, as we think of this, I want us to be so mindful of it, that even though that son had decided to go his own way, to wander away into the, into the far land, that the Father was still waiting that son to come back. He was still waiting for him to return. I'm sure every day he looked out across that, that plain to see was that son returning. I'm sure every day he spent time in prayer seeking, praying for that wayward son. As you read on down through here it says and while he was still a long way off the father saw him and felt compassion he felt compassion. And you know this morning, there's, there's four characteristics I want to pick out here, but this is the one I really want us to zoom in on this morning. As Christians, as believers, having that heart of compassion for our family members, for those who we work with, for our neighbours, for our area, having that heart of compassion for the lost. Just as his father had compassion for this son, <clears throat> for this son. I come back to that in a few minutes. Just go on down through. And his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. Even though his son didn't deserve forgiveness, his father forgave the son. He immediately. Not only did he watch for his return, when he did return, he embraced him with love. He forgave him. And the fourth point, just fourth point characteristic, is that he praised God. He praised him and he celebrated for his return. But you know this morning, I want to really zoom in on. But 
the Father had compassion for the Son. And you know, I want to share a wee verse of scripture that I felt God has been on my heart. And it's, uh, it's found in 2 Chronicles. You know, God gave Pamela and myself this wee verse of scripture about, about six years ago. It's found in 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. Don't need to I'll just read it out here, but it says, If my people, I'm sure we all know this verse, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. You know, about six years ago, God profoundly gave us this verse of scripture. And I suppose prior to that, we were married a few years. And we were both working and we were, yes, yes, see, I've been on with God. But I have to confess there wasn't that need. Well, we didn't have that heart of compassion for those around us. And you know, one Sunday night in Leicester Bill, God gave us this verse. And you know, we started to hold prayer meetings in our house on a Monday night. And you know, bit by bit, God started to give us that heart of compassion for those around us. God started to give us that heart of compassion for our neighbours and those that we worked with. And out of that, different things started to develop. And you know, this morning, I want us just to take a wee look at this verse for a few moments. If my people who are called by my name. And I want to challenge us this morning, I challenge myself as well. I don't stand up here for having everything so stout, far from it. <laughs> I'm afraid. But if my people who are called by my name. And you know, I want us to be challenged up this morning. I want us to think about that this morning. That those living around us, those that are in contact with us, by what name do they know us? Do they know us by the name of Jesus? Whenever we have a conversation with them, by our actions, do they see Jesus growing out of us? Do they see that heart of compassion from, from knowing, from us knowing God flowing out towards other people? Do they see that? If my people who are called by name humble themselves, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. You know, in order for us to have these characteristics that we read of in Luke 14, there has to be that intimate relationship with Almighty God. There has to be that humbling ourselves. There has to be that praying. There has to be that seeking his face. That all has to happen in order for us to develop the characteristics of God Almighty inside us. And when we do, when we spend that time, when we seek his face, when we are found in that intimate relationship, those characteristics begin to flow out of us. And those around us begin to see that we love God, that we love Jesus. That heart of compassion starts to flow out of us. You know, I have a, I have a, a very, uh, I love reading up on, on past revivals. I have a real desire to, just to, to, to read up on them and to see what happened. And I was reading a really documentary one time about the, the revival of the island of Lewis. And you know, there was one thing that really stood out to me. And it was during that revival, one night a, a crowd of, what age they were, but they become a tremendous conviction. Whether they were in a, a nightclub or in a, in, a, in a pub or wherever they were. But they left that pub or left that nightclub and they went to the police station. And I wondered at this, why did they go to the police station? And as I read on down through, I found the answer. That even those people in their sinful state, they recognised that the policeman in that, in that village was a godly man 
He realised that he knew Jesus. That Jesus radiated out of him. And there they stood in the middle of the night waiting for a policeman to come out so that they could find Jesus. And you know, I was so challenged by that. I was so challenged, you know, that if so many people that I'm in contact with, do they know that I have Jesus in here? Is Jesus flowing out of me every day? Is Jesus flowing out of me in my conversations? Is Jesus flowing out of me in my actions? I thought it was amazing that they were actually the no to go to that policeman to find Jesus. I thought it was amazing. I want to encourage us this morning to be a people who pray and seek after God. You know, I was just contemplating this week. The last Father's Day I shared in Mononeelum. And I started to value it for myself. Where am I with God from this day last year? And this morning I would like us all to, to do that evaluation. Where, where am I? Am I still where, where I was this time last year on Father's Day? Or have I, has my relationship with God deepened and deepened and deepened? Have I went on to the next step with God? And I want to encourage each one of us this morning just to do that evaluation. Because, you know, Pastor Gary over in Liston Bill would always say that there's always, always more. And I firmly believe that there's always a deeper relationship with God. There's always going on and going on. You know, I, I can imagine for some people maybe that this lockdown has been a has been maybe a time where we have grown possibly slightly cold. I know myself. Yes, we have blessed times as a family at home and church and that, but. Uh, I know myself there's times where, where it's just so easy to drift along. And I wonder this morning, is this a morning where we actually take a step back and say, okay, Lord, where am I with you this morning? Am I, am I continually growing and growing and, and growing deeper with you? Or am I just sitting stagnant? So I want to encourage each one of us this morning to press on into the things of God. To press on, to go deeper, to go to that next level with him. I don't know about you, but I, I have a real heart's desire to see a move of God in our land. I have a heart's desire to see this, this land revived for Jesus again. And I, I know about your reaction, you speak the same. But I believe the church... I speak out of the general because the church needs to arise, needs to find, find its zeal again, find that joy of the Lord, which is our strength, to press on, to break through into the supernatural, to break through into what God wants to do. He wants to take each one of us deeper and deeper with him. He wants us to move us on, to move us on into greater things. And I want to encourage each one of us this morning to press on into those things. To press it on into what God has for your life. Just don't stand, stand still. But to yearn for more. To yearn for more of God. More of the things of God. And when we do that, you know, I'm just thinking here of Psalm, I think it's Psalm 37. Psalm 37 and verse, verse 4. It says to delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. And you know, when I start to ponder on that verse, to delight ourselves in the Lord, it means to dig deep into this here. It means to spend time in the word of God. It means to feed ourselves and continue to feed ourselves. And when we do that, the things of God begin to flow out of our lives. And that's why it's so easy that he will give you the desires of your heart because they'll be heavenward desires. They'll not be desires that we have, they'll be heavenward ones. They'll be what God wants us to do. What God wants us to do. You know, this morning, I, I just really want to encourage us to have that heart of compassion. And that heart of compassion for the lost comes by having that relationship with Almighty God. That deepened relationship to going further. Do you know, it's time. It's time for the church to arise. The church in general, not just to sit, but to arise, to press on. 
Press on into what God has for each one of us. There's so much more. There's so much more. You know, I was just thinking of this fellowship here whenever I was praying. And you know, this fellowship is specifically placed in this town. It's specifically placed here. It's not placed anywhere else. It's placed here for God to move in this area. I don't know, but I have faith to believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that we can ask or think. He's able. He's able. And folks, it's time. It's time to press on. It's time to go into that deeper level with God. It's time. Do you know what I was, uh, I would very often go for a walk whenever I'm preparing. <laughs> I just want to clear my head that I look like wasn't very academic in school, so I kind of struggled to, to sit at a study for a long period of time. But you know, as I walked out around the house, um, I noticed back uh, on Mother's Day, the children and myself decided to do flower pots or window pots for, for Pamela. And so we did four or five window pots around the house and we went to the little and bought the boxes that you could fill the water and uh, plant the pansies and stuff into them. And, you know, for the first few weeks, they just they absolutely jumped out of the boxes, and we were actually quite, we were actually quite proud of ourselves. For a <laughs> but you know, as I, I walked around the house and I noticed a couple of other evenings ago that those flowers had started to, to drip over. They started to fall apart. I remember we were sitting, we were sitting at the table, and we were just saying, "Oh, wonder what's happened to that flower pot." And uh, then it dawned on me that they needed watered. That, that reservoir of water had, had run out. And, uh, and so be it, I was just thinking in, in, in the spiritual sense. You know, we don't constantly keep feeding ourselves. That water, that living water. We, 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 we do come to a stage where we're not effective, and we don't shine. Just like those flowers shine out of those flower pots. They begin not to shine, they begin to droop over, and we come and we're not effective. For God. Folks, this morning I know this is a very simple word, but I want to encourage each one of us to press on into a, into a deeper level with God. Not just to stay stagnant, but to press on. To press on into a deeper level with, with Almighty God. And let our hearts be open for Him to do what He wants to do through us. To have that heart of compassion for the lost. To have that heart of compassion for our, our, our families, our, our work colleagues, those who we live around this time. I believe God wants to do great and mighty things. I believe that with all my heart. Are we available? Are we ready for God to use us? Are we in that place where, where we're red hot? Red hot that God can, can just tap into our resources and use us for his glory. I want you to be really encouraged this morning. I want you to be spurred on in the things of God. I want you to press on into, into another level that God has for each one of us. Thank you. And let's just let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for your word. And Lord, I just pray that if, if there's one person here this morning that may have just grown slightly cold or maybe just sitting stagnant. Lord, I pray that today will be a day where, 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 where we evaluate our lives before you, Father God. And that we birth that desire to go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper in the things of God. And that desire is birthed inside us to seek your face. And as it says in John 10, 4, that my sheep hear my voice. That each one of us will be in that position that we hear your voice. That we be in that intimate place with you, Father God. That we hear you intimately. And Lord, I just pray for each and every person that's gathered here this morning. And Lord, I just pray, Father God, that you would, that you would um, begin, Father God, to use each one of us mightily. 
that you would open up those doors of opportunity, Father God. Lord, we just even pray for this time, Father God. Lord, I just pray, Father God, that by your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would begin to open doors. Open doors of opportunity, Father God, for your gospel to be spread, Father God. Lord, I just pray, Lord, even for, for the revival of this area, Father God. That you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon, upon this land, Father. Lord, we need you, Father God. We need you, Lord. Lord, have your way amongst us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.